towards the One World Religion have just taken place on September 14th and 15th, 2022, with Catholicism and Islam pretty much coming together and say, yeah, we worship the same God and we're brothers and sisters, just different paths to a different God. This is all falling under the umbrella of the uniting of the Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, of course, but not the real Christianity. It's Catholicism that's being united under this one world religion. The big event that took place on September 14th and 15th was at the 7th Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religions, and it concluded on last Thursday. But before I get into that, I'll briefly just touch on and remind people of the Abrahamic family house being built in Abu Dhabi, where there's religious, it's a religious center for Catholics, Muslims, and Jews to all come together and worship all through the Abrahamic religions there at this one thing. The reason this is important is because 2 Thessalonians 2.4 tells us that the Antichrist will demand the worship of himself and his image from everybody. And anyone who doesn't worship him, these people will die actually. They will become martyrs because the only people who won't worship him will be true believers in Jesus Christ, which is not mentioned by Pope Francis at any of these big meetings. So let me read a little bit from this article about it. The world religions leaders today adopted the human fraternity document signed by His Eminence, the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar and Chairman of the Muslim Council of Elders, Dr. Ahmed al Taib and His Holiness, Pope Francis, their name, not mine, of the Catholic Church in Abu Dhabi in 2019. And this came during the 7th Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religions, which concluded on Thursday. Some highlights from the World Congress of Religions. We note that pluralism in terms of differences in skin color, gender, race, language, and culture are expressions of the wisdom of God in creation. Religious diversity is permitted by God, and therefore any coercion to a particular religion and religious doctrine is unacceptable. So, as you can tell, they're not saying here at these at these events that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Messiah, the only way to heaven, because that would contradict Islam and Judaism. So it's it's uniting, everybody's giving up the truth here. They're all just coming together to get along to give up the truth, which is that salvation is found through Jesus Christ alone. Back to the article it says, We recognize the importance and value of the document of human fraternity for world peace and living together between the Holy See and Al Azhar al Sharif. And then they mention two different documents that were resolved and signed into place by the UN General Assembly, as well as the Makkah Declaration adopted in Mecca in 2019. And these call for peace, dialogue, mutual understanding, and mutual respect among believers. So it's really the uniting of all these religions under the fact that we need to coexist together. And yes, of course, we need to coexist together. But the problem here is that they're starting to aim it towards we serve the same God. We worship the same God. You know, these Abrahamic religions are just different expressions of God to different people. And that's an absolute lie. The Jewish people are stuck in the old covenant, not accepting the new covenant. Islam is clearly, the Quran was written 600 years after the Bible, and they're clearly ripped off stories Muhammad ripped off and manipulated to create his own religion in the same region from the same stories. I mean, Muhammad even demanded that the original manuscripts for the Quran be destroyed. Why would he demand that? Because to cover it up, obviously. So the one truth is found within the biblical text alone, within the old and the new covenant mixed together, the new covenant, salvation through Jesus Christ alone. So really it was this document of human fraternity. It was signed by the Pope and this grand Imam and adopted at the seventh Congress of leaders of the world and traditional religions in Kazakhstan. It's the uniting of the world under a one world religion that the antichrist will be the head of eventually. A glimpse of the seventh Congress of leaders of world and traditional religion. Here's from Vatican news and I was reading through this article and noticed something interesting that Congress, the seventh Congress of leaders of world and traditional religion came to life in 2003 in the wake of the tragic September 11th attacks of the United States and following Pope John Paul II's second spirit of Assisi meeting in 2002. So here's just another thing that came out of the September 11th attacks. Pretty interesting to note that. Worth noting about this interfaith meeting is that it took place within a pyramid. Kind of strange that that's their building of choice. Also, Pope Francis said that his goal for this meeting was peace and unity, of course. Very similar to what we know in 1 Thessalonians 5.3, peace and security is what they'll be saying and then sudden destruction comes on them like labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape and that's the whole point really of this whole meeting really and this whole uniting of these religions together 
Not that we shouldn't get along and not that we should be out killing each other or something, but the fact that we're there trying to unite under unite everybody under peace and security, that's exactly what the Bible says they'll be doing because it's dropping the truth that Jesus Christ is the way to salvation, which is the true love and peace that people need to come to realize and just accepting everybody's false doctrines and false teachings for peace and safety and that will cause sudden destruction. Pope Francis also said at this meeting that the best way to stop religious extremism is not through following the teachings of Jesus Christ, but actually through political democracy. So just enforcing the fact that what the Antichrist will have, which will be the one world government, one world religion. And again, Pope Francis does not mention the truth that salvation is found through Jesus Christ alone, but in fact says this, and this is from Vatican News on the article called Pope in Kazakhstan Religions key to building world peace and understanding in reference to this meeting that took place. It says, in his speech to the Congress, the Pope began by addressing everyone as brothers and sisters in the name of the fraternity that unites us as children of the same heaven. He noted that before the mystery of the infinite that transcends and attracts us, the religions remind us that we are creatures, not omnipotent, journeying towards the same heavenly goal. I mean, out of his own mouth. I mean, the fact that people who are Catholics don't see that this guy's pushing for one world religion is insane. I mean, it's absolutely clear as day that this is what he's pushing for. Saying we're all going to the same heavenly goal? The, that Muslims who actually have written on the Dome of the Rock building in there in Jerusalem actually says God has no son. And so they want to unite Catholicism with people who say God has no son? because it's clearly written clear as day in the Bible that you have to acknowledge Jesus as the son of God in order to find salvation through him. The, everything in the New Testament has to be believed 100% truth for you to find your salvation. That's the full truth is found within the Bible alone and within the new covenant and the new teachings. And if you're giving up some of that to find peace and unity with other religions just to get along because you don't like disagreeing with people, you're in for big trouble. I mean, Revelation even says the cowardly are cast into hell. So don't be cowardly when it comes to the things of Jesus Christ and the truth of the Bible. Now again, quickly worth noting, I'd have no problem if these people all came together and said, hey, we shouldn't kill each other and we shouldn't be warring with each other because that's not good. That makes sense. But when they're starting to say these things about we're all brothers and sisters pushing towards the same heavenly goal, and even though this was between Islam and Catholicism, it also noted from a Vatican source that Judaism was there as well, as well as Buddhists. So we have this uniting of the one world religion that will come to fulfill the Second Thessalonians 2 for all people will worship the beast. Also worth noting is the Abraham Accords. Before Donald Trump's election, he declared the number one goal for his presidency would be to achieve peace between Israel and her Arab neighbors. After three years of determining diplomacy, President Trump surprised the world by announcing a peace agreement between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. A few days later, the country of Bahrain announced they would too establish peace with Israel. On September 15, 2020, representatives from Israel, the United States, the United Arab Emirates, and Bahrain met in Washington, D.C. on the White House lawn. There they signed the Abraham Accords. Again, this unity, pushing towards this unity, which is interesting. And because of Daniel 9, 27, it's prophesied in the Bible that a peace agreement will be signed between Israelis and Palestinians just seven years before the Battle of Armageddon and the physical return of Jesus to the earth. The prophecy is found in Daniel 9, 27, and it says, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. And the determined shall be poured upon the desolate. This prophecy states that the Antichrist will confirm the Abrahamic covenant with many for seven years. Remember, the covenant God made with Abraham declared Abraham's seed would dwell in the land of Israel. The Abraham Accords is signed by Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates acknowledge Israel has a right to exist in the land given to them by the Abrahamic Covenant. So the question has to be asked, was the signing of the Abrahamic Accords and the confirmation of the covenant the confirmation of the covenant that marks the beginning of the final seven years? Maybe, interesting, worth noting and pointing out, 
but we will see, of course, as time goes on. Also worth noting that Jared Kushner had a big deal in getting that Abrahamic Accord signed. Really, what all this is, is setting the stage for the final Bible prophecies to be fulfilled. We don't know the timeline. We don't know these things. There's many interesting things that look like this could go on, like Pope Francis being the last pope if the St. Malachi prophecy is true and real. But people are saying he may resign, and then another pope resigned before him. So if that happens, maybe those two are illegitimate popes and there's still two more to fill the 112. There's so many different things that could take place. Just like now when we look back at Bible prophecy in the Old Testament, it all makes sense now, but at the time it was like very, like, People thought this was going to happen and it didn't happen. People thought something else would happen and it didn't. The same with Jesus coming and then expecting the Messiah to be this like war hero to free them, to free the Jewish people from the Romans. And it wasn't that at all. But Jesus tells us it's important to watch and to look for the signs of the times, just like the fig tree. And many things are happening that really look like this is beginning to take place and these prophecies are coming to their fulfillment. So it's important to watch. But when these things don't, if they don't pan out how we expect, or if they're like beginning stages or seeds or whatever, then, you know, it's important to watch and to just see how these things pan out in the end. But clearly, all of these things moving towards this direction are moving towards the direction of the final days and the Antichrist coming and these, these final prophecies being fulfilled. Also, I know many people, I've seen many people on my TikTok page saying that they're worried and they're scared and they're fearful. None of the pointing out a prophecy from me is ever meant to be fearful or to scare people. And to note is 2 Peter 3, 13 through 14, which really came to me at the perfect time when I was really meditating on how to share this to people so they aren't scared. And then that just happened to be the verse I was reading that night from the Bible, proof of God in my book. And that's one of those little ways he speaks to you when you're seeking him. And it says, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. So really that we look forward to the coming hope and Jesus Christ coming back. So we don't need to fear. We don't know the timeline. We don't know if this is the beginning of the seven years or if it doesn't start for another 50 years. All we need to do is seek Jesus Christ, seek the truth, he calls us to watch for the signs, so it's good to watch for the signs and then live life righteously and according to his ways. Don't have fear. Be looking forward to the things because what we have coming for eternity, billions and trillions of years is beyond anything we can imagine and how great the glory will be. So there's no reason to fear. And if anybody here actually does go through some type of hard thing, such as martyrship or severe persecution, we're told that if we share in the sufferings of Christ for his name, the glory and the reward that we have will be tremendous in heaven. So everyone in heaven who was persecuted for Jesus or his name or the cause of Christ, they are not disappointed that they went through that because the reward in heaven is beyond anything we can imagine. So no fear of the times that we're in. Just wanted to mention that for people here. But absolutely what we're seeing between Catholicism, Islam, and Judaism is a uniting to come together for peace and safety that will lead to one world religion, that will lead to the Antichrist standing up and saying, I'm God, you need to worship me. And people who don't believe in Jesus Christ, which is not the message that's being said at these Abrahamic unions, they're going to give in and receive the mark in their hand or their head or worship the image in the beast. And those people will not be saved. So it's important to be aware and awake to this fact. Salvation is found in Jesus Christ alone. And we are not to give up that absolute truth under any circumstance. That's the only way to salvation. Thanks for watching and God bless.